Hello, everybody, and welcome. My name is Bob Goodwin. I'm the founder of Career Club, and welcome to today's Career Club live event with uh, John Wooden's Pyramid of Success. Um, just a little bit about Career Club before we get started. Uh, we're using proven sales methods and tools to help folks find a career that matters to them. Uh, I'm excited to say we've just uh, relaunched our website, so please feel free to check us out at career.club and uh, would love to have you uh, join us there. Secondly is this is a live event. So we've got the ability to uh, take comments and questions from uh, folks who are watching it live with us. Uh, next is if for some reason you need to uh, leave early or you joined us late, you can always watch this on replay. As well, we're now making these available on your favorite podcast platforms. So uh, you can just download uh, at your convenience to do that. Uh, next thing I always do is I want to thank my colleague, Heather Zinzer, who is the brains behind all of this. So, Heather, thank you, as always, for what you've put together here for us today. So I am really excited about our topic today. Uh, I'm a giant John Wooden fan and pyramid of success. But I realize that a lot of people may not uh, know exactly who Coach Wooden is. Maybe you've heard of him. Maybe you haven't. Maybe you're a little bit familiar with the pyramid of success. But I wanted to just read a little bit uh, about Coach Wooden's background to get folks acclimated to who really kind of the topic is today. So nicknamed the Wizard of Westwood, Coach Wooden won 10 NCAA national championships in a 12-year period as a head coach of the UCLA Bruins. No other team has won more than four in a row in Division I basketball, men or women. Uh, within this period, his teams won an NCAA record 88 consecutive games. That's a men's record, 88 consecutive games. He also won the prestigious National Coach of the Year Award seven times. So obviously an amazing coach, but the story doesn't stop there. As a 5'10 guard at Purdue, he was the first player to be named a basketball All-American three times. And given that he played before the NCAA tournament was a thing, uh, retroactively, his 1932 team at Purdue was uh, named the national champions. Um, he was inducted into the Naismith Memorial Basketball Hall of Fame as a player in 1960 and then as a coach in 1973, the first person ever to be enshrined in both categories. As one of the most revered coaches in the history of sports, some of his beloved players include Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Bill Walton. Uh, he was really known for his short, simple, inspirational messages to his players, but also very well known for our topic today, the pyramid of success and his definition of success, which is what we're going to lead off with here in just a couple of minutes. Um, Coach Wooden's 29-year career you know, has just overwhelmingly received positive critical acclaim and has created a legacy of great interest, not just in the arena of sports, but also in business personal success in organizational leadership. So clearly uh, just a wonderful legacy that uh, Coach Wooden uh, left. And I remember when he passed away uh, several years ago now, there was no shortage of grown men who were in tears as though their own father had passed away. He had left that kind of an impact on them. So with all of that said, I want to introduce Lynn Garrett. Lynn is the CEO of the John R. Wooden course and was Coach Wooden's business partner for over 10 years and is based in Southern California. So with that, welcome, Lynn. Good to, good to be with you, Bob. Well, thank you. And I, I, I love your very own brand in the background, too. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're coaching them way up every day. That's That's what we do. Awesome. So uh, one of the little traditions that we've got on our LinkedIn Live is what we call Rocks Fab Five, where we just have some icebreaker questions so that our audience can get to know you a little bit. So it just takes a couple minutes. So where were you born and raised, Lynn? Uh, I was born in a small town in northern Ohio, Shelby, Ohio. There you go. Nice. We love Ohio. And then uh, where'd you go to school? Uh, went to Western Michigan University, did a bachelor's and master's degree there and uh, played a little football. Awesome. And then uh, just a little bit about your family. Um, I've been married uh, to my wife, uh, Tracy, for the past uh, 26 years. Have uh, uh, two sons, uh, Kyle and Cole, and, and two grandsons. Uh, they're all out here in Southern California. That's phenomenal. And then just a little bit about your career background. 
Well, I started out in the uh, out in the corporate world. I've been in the, in the consulting, training, and performance improvement uh, world. Worked uh, for a, a prestigious company in the Detroit area called the Sandy Corporation for uh, 16 years. Actually, started uh, with a couple of large companies. Worked for both General Electric and Johnson and Johnson prior to being in the consulting and training business, and then started my own business, Garen Marketing Services. Now it's been some. Uh, 26 uh, years ago, and about six years into that, met and started working with uh, with Coach Wood, and we worked together personally for uh, 15 years. And since he's passed, I've worked the past year, 10 years with his family. So my relationship with Coach Wood is little, literally 25 years, and mm-hmm. been uh, working and teaching uh, his content and his pyramid of success for that period of time. Yeah, and, uh, and I'll tell people how we got acquainted here in just a minute. Then. Um... What, what, what would we find you doing outside of work? Uh, probably uh, watching a lot of green kids uh, and, and, and sun sports. I do a lot of that. I, I play a little golf. Uh, I'm very uh, like sports, but got a dog. I walk every day and ride the bike and play a little golf. So that, that's kind awesome. of what I do for fun. Sounds fun. So I see a couple of a uh, few friends here online. Laquan, good seeing you. Alan, yes, he is the GOAT. Coach Wooden is definitely the GOAT. <laughs> and Todd, we're going to, if you love the actual pyramid, hang on. We're going to get into that in just a second. So I discovered you, Lynn, maybe 10 years ago. I can't remember how long it's been now. but It's been longer uh, than that, I think, actually. <laughs> all right. Okay, so that, that's good and bad, I guess. Um, but but you know, I was already a fan of the pyramid and of Coach Wooden as a man. And I was Googling, like, surely somebody is out teaching these principles and, you know, it's not going to, uh, you know, just pass away with Coach Wooden. And I, I was really hoping that there was the ability to access, you know, just the amazing content that we're going to kind of do an overview of today. And thank goodness for Google. And thank goodness that I'm not afraid to reach out to people I don't know. So uh, that's how I met you. And I just reached out to you and said, I love Coach Wood and I'm going to be out in California in the next few weeks. Would you meet me for coffee? And a beautiful friendship was born out of all that. So absolutely. I enjoyed every minute of it. Absolutely. So funny how it circled back with your new career club uh, initiative and and how the two tie together. So it's great to be. Well, and, and, you know, that's why you're here. So maybe that's a good way of starting. You know, I'm envious of you because you were Coach Wooden's friend. Um, I'm, I'm a fan, uh, wish I was a friend, but, but the, the content of the pyramid that we're going to get into just resonates with me so much, not just as a business person, but, you know, really as a human who's trying to live a life worth living. And, you know, those are the things that really resonated with me and why I wanted to dig in deeper and, and thank you. And to your point, as we're working with clients at career club, what we find is a lot of people are at a a juncture in their lives where they're looking for meaning. You know, they're trying to figure out what success really looks like. And that's where we're going to kick this conversation off. Um, But, but I wanted to just really showcase and start to, to let people know what the pyramid of success is. And, and just, I know all we're going to be able to do today, scratch the surface on some things, but I thought maybe we could kind of, kick the conversation off with, you know, kind of related to the pyramid is Coach Wooden's definition of success. And by the world standards, you know, I I ticked off all the things, you know, 88 consecutive games, 10 titles in 12 years, you know, the, the first person to be enshrined both as a player and as a coach. And anybody would go to Coach Wooden and say, oh my gosh, you've been amazingly successful but he didn't really buy into that definition of success. Could you maybe kick us off with? with yeah, why that no, is? no, he didn't. All of those things that you mentioned as his honors and accolades had really nothing to do with how he thought about uh, success. And um, when you say success, his definition of success is really where the pyramid of success started. He actually built his definition of success, worked on it for two years before he even began to think about the pyramid of success. Um, and he, he wrote a definition really trying to thinking himself to what, what it would take to be a better teacher and, and a better coach and wanted a framework for how to do that. And um, thought about a number of things he'd learned uh, 
primarily from his father. Mm -hmm. uh, simple things like never try to be better than someone else, but never cease to be the best that you can be. Um, and uh, it also an initiative that uh, in his high school class or in a, a junior high class, the class actually spent time talking about success and debated uh, kind of the world's view of it, uh, Webster's definition, the accumulation of material possessions, the attainment of a position of power or prestige. That's kind of, if you look success up in the dictionary, that's where you'd find it, or that's what you'd find. But Coach Wooden wasn't really happy with that. And his, his teacher at the time gave him a couple of ideas that then culminated uh, in, in his own definition of success. And he really had four elements. Uh, success is the peace of mind that comes with self-satisfaction in knowing you made the effort to do the best of which you're capable. So four key ideas were connected to his lifetime definition and pursuit of success, peace of mind, self-satisfaction, effort, and capability. Those were things that mm -hmm. ultimately uh, you have control over and things that, that can lead you down a path of success in so many areas. But ultimately, how you feel about yourself, uh, the peace of mind that comes from that, and all you have to work with is basically the effort that you provide based on the capability that you have. So uh, he spent two years honing that definition and then spent uh, nearly eight, eight decades living it out. And there's no winning, there's no material possessions, there's nothing in that definition that strikes mm -hmm. up, uh, you know, kind of with what the world's view of success is. But he really believed that that was true success. And he put that at the top of his pyramid and all of the blocks, all of the behaviors that the pyramid represents ultimately is targeted towards achieving success as he defined it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And, and so to, just to, to review for my own benefit, peace of mind comes from self-satisfaction of knowing I made the effort to be the best that I was capable of becoming. Absolutely. And that being the best that you're capable of becoming is in every realm of life. The person that you want to be, the father that you want to be, the mom that you want to be, the parent that you want to be, the coach that you want to be, the business professional, whatever it is, that definition of success fits. If I can, uh, just a, a, a quick aside, I there was a um, um, very recently a, a concert with Adele uh, that mm -hmm. Oprah Winfrey hosted. And I don't know if you um, caught in that interview, that very intimate interview that Oprah did with Adele, ask her the most pressing question of the night was, Adele, what is it you're really looking for? You've got everything on the planet. Mm -hmm. You're the most celebrated star and singer out there. What are you really looking for? Her answer was peace of mind, Oprah. I'm looking for peace of mind. I thought that was interesting all these years later, mm. knowing that's kind of where Coach started when he built his own definition of success all those years ago. Yeah, and, and I even remember, first of all, I appreciate what you're saying, Lynn, also about <clears throat> this actually has nothing to do with sports. This has everything to do with life. Absolutely. And, right, and you know how you were talking about whether it is you know, in my relationships, you know, just what I'm trying to become as a human being myself in my work life. You know, we had uh, Dr. Andy Garrett on last week and he was teaching us about work-life integration, not balance. This is all an integrated human that you were trying to become, not one person over here and one person over there and excelling in one area and failing in another. It's like, no, this is all about, you know, the peace of mind that comes from the self-satisfaction that I made the effort to be the best I was able to become in whatever realm I, I am in life. Absolutely. Right? It, it sort of undergirds, you know, the whole thing. So, you know, we've kind of been alluding to the, the pyramid. Um, one of the things I, I just want to touch on this real quick, because it, it's one of my favorite things you've taught me about Coach Wooden is, you know, the difference between greatness and goodness. And I think that becomes a very natural segue into the pyramid, if you don't mind. Well, I think that's a, that's a great definition. And, and we picked that phrase. We don't own that phrase. It really came from uh, from the Hall of Fame sports broadcaster, Dick Enberg, when he stood up at John Wooden's memorial service and described his lifetime friend and tried to come up with the best words he could come up with. 
this, that was how he described him. He said, John Wooden's greatness was only exceeded by John Wooden's goodness. Uh, and, and ultimately the man that he become and the person that he was, was even more important than all of the things that he accomplished, you know, in the sports world. And that's really what the pyramid is all about. It, it's a definition for high quality, high character, uh, human performance on a day-to-day -day basis in every realm of your life. You know, and that goodness, I, I, I believe that's why, you know, grown men in their sixties were in tears you know, talking about Coach Wood and all these years later, you know, yeah. from when they you know, were really spending all their time with him because he touched them at that character level, not just as a UCLA Bruin. Yeah, he touched them at the life skills uh, level, Bob. He taught them uh, more about how to win in life than winning on the court. And that's what it was really all about. When you see pictures of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar walking his, uh, his coach across the court when coach was 96 years old, and they were celebrating a relationship now that had lasted uh, for 50 years. And Kareem wrote 300 pages uh, in a book, uh, My 50 Years with John Wooden, which is a very powerful read. You understand the quality of relationships and life skills that got built. And that's okay. our opportunity, really, with the pyramid. So so with that said, maybe now's a good time then to, to introduce folks to the pyramid. So Heather, if we could do that and look at the full pyramid. Yeah, awesome. what's important to know about this, obviously, as you see the definition at the top, is he worked on this for 14 years. And, and uh, I, I believe it's the most important part of John Wooden's legacy. I believe it's the most uh, complete template of human behavior that's ever been constructed. It's a Ph.D. class in human performance and human behavior. I've been studying it and looking at it now for over uh, 20 years, and you never run out of insights and things that you can understand about mm. yourself and the dynamics of behavior, whether it's it's your own life, it's your family, it's looking at a total organization. So think about that. You spend 14 years working on the best idea you've ever had, and you're able to get it down to one page, right? Uh, we hear the whole world talking about, a lot of companies talk about getting their employees on the same page. Well, the problem with that idea is nobody knows what page it is, right? Well, I think this is the page. Uh, and this is, uh, as I said, it, it's absolutely a brilliant uh, piece of work that probably isn't as uh, as applied in our world as much as it should be. And that's really the mission that I've been on for 20 years to bring this to the central uh, sort of framework of our thinking in our work and in our life. So, so um, would it be helpful if we kind of went to uh, the one that maybe kind of shows it at a slightly higher level and we can from whatever yeah, order you want. Yeah, the, the side by side version, Bob. Okay. Um, it, it, I think that is a good way to, to look at that. Yeah, okay. basically. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, for our listeners, if you're not in full screen mode, this might be a good time uh, you just to make sure that you can capture the detail. But, but go ahead, Lan, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna say, well, Coach spent 14 years building this. Um, and he very uh, carefully wrote a definition for each of these 25 blocks. And he organized it basically from the cornerstones in. He laid the cornerstones, the most, when you're building a foundation, you obviously have to anchor it. And industriousness and enthusiasm anchor the foundation. No substitute for hard work and loving what you do. And honestly, if you don't love what you do, you can't work at it as hard as, as you'd like to. I mean, you may have, have had jobs that, you worked that pretty hard, but you didn't like doing it. And over a period of time, you ultimately burn out on it. Yes. But when you find something you really love to do and can put your whole heart in it, you have a chance to be what he described as industrious. And industriousness is a, is a higher level of hard work. So he put those two, uh, those two blocks in place uh, to begin with. And then he, he put three other blocks in what he called the foundation. So those five blocks at the bottom represent the foundation of the period of the pyramid. And when you add these three blocks in the middle, friendship, loyalty, and cooperation, you add others, right? Hard work and enthusiasm, you can see that in yourself, but friendship, loyalty, and cooperation is all about adding others. Quality relationships, the sense of loyalty and commitment that you have uh, to those you love, the things you believe in, uh, what a, and it's, it's not, um, it's not by accident that loyalty is in the center or the heart of John Wooden's foundation. 
And that represented a key piece of who he was as a person and how important he believes loyalty is in a, in a, the kind of culture uh, in the kind of world that we want to live in. And ultimately, he had a very insightful view of ultimately what cooperation is. Listen, if you want to be heard, be more interested in finding the best way than in having your way. <laughs> that, that, that really kind of uh, changes everything in terms of people getting along. And from there, then he put these next four blocks, what we call the second tier, self-control, alertness, initiative, and intendance. You've got to be under control mentally and physically. You've got to be aware of what's going on around you and having a sense and a sense of alertness, your, your day-to-day -day radar, if you will, to see things differently and to see things maybe that people, other people don't see or to see things before other people see them, see them and understand them, uh, which gives you a sense of personal momentum to take the initiative to do things that you have an opportunity to do in your life. Initiative is getting things started. And then the next block in tennis is getting things finished. Uh, and then he went up to the heart of the pyramid, condition, skill, and team spirit. He had this whole, he was way ahead of his time when it came to a concept of wholeness, mental and physical wellness, if you will. Mm -hmm. Condition was mentally, physically, morally, spiritually. And it was interesting that Coach Wooden said you could never achieve your peak level of mental and physical condition until you reach your peak level of moral condition. Uh, that's interesting in a culture where our gyms are full and our churches are half empty. Uh, so I'm not sure we're working these days on all of the conditioning we should be working on. And then skill at the heart of his pyramid, being able to do things properly and quickly, and then being a good team player, team spirit. And he had a very simple but powerful definition of team spirit, which meant consideration for others. And then as you moved up near the peak of the pyramid, these two absolutely critical blocks of poise and confidence. Very simple definition of poise, just be yourself. And interesting, where is confidence on the pyramid? And what does it really represent? Confidence is really high on the pyramid, which to me was a, a, a major insight because where do you get true confidence? You get it from all of the things below it. And that's one of the key elements of how he designed the pyramid. It builds from the bottom up and the things that you're trying to achieve at the top come from your ability to do all of the things below it. So true confidence comes from how hard you work, how enthusiastic you are, your relationships, your ability to be under control and alert and alive and be conditioned to have good skills, be a team player and just be yourself. If you can do those things, you'll have a true sense of confidence. And then ultimately his, his <coughs> brilliant definition of competitive greatness, uh, the enjoyment of a difficult challenge and being your best when your best is needed. Uh, that really represents mm -hmm. the pinnacle uh, with faith and patience, faith that things will work out as they should, provided you do what you do, you should, and the patience that it takes. Uh, and isn't it interesting <laughs> how far up on John Wooden's pyramid patience is that it's at the very top? Because Coach Wooden says, good things take time and they should. Uh, mm -hmm. And then along the side, we have these things called mortar. On the left side, some things we talk about um, really as the force of human spirit, ambition, adaptability, resourcefulness, fight, uh, connected to faith. And then uh, the idea of character in your life, in your organization, in your family. And how does Coach Wooden define true character? sincerity, honesty, reliability, and integrity, and then the patience it takes to work through those things to be the kind of person that you ultimately can be that enables you to attain this level of success that Coach defined there. That's uh, the, uh, the, the high-paced, high-speed <laughs> overview of the whole pyramid of success <clears throat> in about three minutes. Well, that is, um, first of all, as a pastor friend of mine says, wow, we that is, it, I mean, gosh, there's just so much. We, we could do 12 of these, uh, you know, uh, events just to kind of break all this down. But, you know, just because the foundation is the foundation, you know, to, to your point, it, 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 like you said, he was so far ahead of, you know, kind of modern organizational theory, if you will, 
but then also down to, you know, everybody's talking about find your person, find your purpose, find your passion, right? And the cornerstones, you know, you've got to be excited about what you're doing if you really are going to give it your all and really work hard at it. And then how it's relationships. Like we don't do all this stuff by ourselves, but then you know, I'm going to go back to full screen mode myself here for a sec. You know, there's the, the, the personal qualities of self-control, alertness, initiative, intentness. I mean, what company doesn't want those things in their, you know, associates to be the great, you know, great uh, organization that they want to be. I'll stop right here because Lisa's got a question. She's do got a work, great question. Yeah, Bob. Do you work up from the bottom or on the bricks you need to work on most? That's, That's a great, a great question. question. Thank you. And, yes. And uh, one of the questions you might ask is, well, how do I know where I am at on these particular things? Um, we, we actually have, a, have something called the Individual Success Assessment that enables you in seven to 10 minutes to determine exactly where you are on all of these. Um, it's it's a, an assessment that gives you your own pyramid of success, not do a commercial for it, but that whole idea of look, taking a good hard inside look at yourself and the blocks of the pyramid is the best place to start. So go to her question. Um, you can really uh, do either one. Uh, this has been taught in a number of ways, a block at a time, or starting with your strengths or starting with your um, opportunities. We don't use the term weaknesses. Uh, they don't represent weaknesses. They really represent opportunities to get better and to improve. So you can approach it either way. Uh, the other important idea here connected to that is to understand the interrelationships of the blocks, not just individually. They do stand alone and you wanna powerfully develop the behavior of the individual block, but you want to understand also how the blocks fit. As an example, mm -hmm. I'll just take two, like industriousness and friendship. Why would Coach Wooden put hard work right next to friendship? The reason is it takes a lot of hard work to have really good friends. And mm -hmm. if you're going to get and keep friends, it's something you've really got to work at. Um, and, and people, friends invest in each other and work hard to maintain and develop their friendships. And oh, by the way, connected to loyalty, you're more likely to be loyal, right? To friends that you have uh, than, than strangers. So uh, again, the 20 years that we've been looking at this, the next generation of studying it block by block or studying your strengths, studying your opportunities is then looking at the interrelationships of all of these behaviors. That's why I like to say it literally is a PhD class on human behavior. So going back to Lisa's question, I mean, if we think about how a pyramid gets built, I mean, it gets built from the bottom up, right? right. And, you know, if, you know, poise, confidence, competitive greatness, it's kind of hard to have that if the foundation is shaky. That is absolutely right. So you want to build, try to build the strength from the bottom. Ultimately, that that's how you're going to be more able to accomplish the uh, the blocks and the behaviors at the top. Um, this is a little off script, but, but it, it's kind of to the point of fundamentals. Do, do you mind telling the story about the first day of practice and uh, shoelaces? <laughs> yeah, well, John Wooden was such a, uh, you know, was so, he believed that everything was, uh, came from the ability to teach the fundamentals well. He, he really tried to mm -hmm. keep uh, the game of basketball, pretty simple. Uh, the game of life uh, isn't very simple, but he certainly tried to find a way to, he, he had ability to communicate that helped you understand things. So he taught things literally from the, the very basics. And uh, one of the great stories is he started every practice for 27 years, teaching his basketball team how to put on their shoes and socks. Grown men who had been putting on their shoes and socks for 18 or 19 years now we're being taught how to do it. And he had a real process for doing it, the way they laced them up, how they had to double tie it, uh, the quality of the socks. He had done a study on uh, socks that stay up, socks that are more, um, uh, more absorbent. He didn't want blisters and he didn't want shoes coming off uh, during the game uh, to slow down the momentum that he built. And also... Uh, he worked his teams harder than any coach I ever heard of. So conditioning 
was incredibly important and you couldn't get in condition if you had blisters. Uh, and usually wrinkly socks and, and shoes that weren't tied properly often created friction, created the friction that uh, they created blisters. So he solved that problem by teaching his teams how to put on their shoes and socks every year. And, you know, there are so many fundamentals like that, little fundamentals we have in our life and in our businesses that never get taught, that get ignored and cause a lot of issues because we don't take care of them properly. Yeah. And, and so, you know, one of the things that kind of always strikes me about the stories like that is some of these things aren't particularly sexy or revolutionary or whatever. They're, they're the basics. But well, you know, got- Bob, it's funny when you first described Coach Wood and you described him as the wizard of Westwood, he hated that term. <laughs> Great. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it, it had taken you on there, but he hated that because there was no magic to what he did. And that's what he said. It was all the fundamentals and the foundations that it takes to really build true success. And he said there was no magic uh, and and there were no secrets. There isn't anything you knew that you would know by yourself for long. And there were no secrets. It was all about the fundamentals and it was all about the work and effort it took. Yeah. So do you see Lisa's comment here? I like how the things near the top of the pyramid require the lower blocks. It's understandable to lack confidence without these foundational items. So many coaches just tell you to quote, believe in yourself just because, or fake it till you make it before you have any real reason to be confident. This makes more sense. I often, and this is, you know, maybe not quite nice, but make fun sometimes of posts that I see and other advice that I call dorm posters. You know, butterflies are free and so are we. You know, just believe in yourself, dog on it. And it's like, but there's no substance. That's like cotton candy. You know, it might taste good for a minute, but there's no nutrition in it. You know, with Coach Wooden, you know, this is like all the food groups in the proper order, in the proper measure, you know, and, and it, it, there's real substance here. I'd, I'd like for you to maybe comment on that. Yeah, line. and Bob, I, I, you know, and connecting to Lisa's comment there, the idea that the pyramid is something that builds you from the inside out, right? In, in the conditioning world, everybody talks about core strength, but you got to think about yourself from the core of, um, um, physically. Mm. You got to think about yourself from the core mentally. Uh, really important to think of yourself uh, from the core spiritually uh and the, and the pyramid really builds you from the inside out and many people can't accomplish things on the outside because they aren't prepared uh, to do things the way they should be done from the inside and how they think about things uh and how they do things fundamentally so um, so could we a lot of this has been about personal development there's this really huge use case for organizations to adopt this model could, could you talk about how that happens and then yeah why don't we bring up the uh, the organizational excellence uh, uh chart uh, i've done uh you know 35 plus years of work in the corporate world helping uh, companies achieve uh, major objectives and this is where the pyramid of success fits in the context of organizational excellence it is the foundation if you've got everybody in your company performing and, and uh, having their day-to-day re- behaviors reflect um, all of the blocks of the pyramid of success and reflecting who you are as people and who you are as teams, you are going to get it all done at a very high level of competence and performance. And having the pyramid of success behaviors in, in place enables you, and this is really critical, to first coach yourself right? You cannot be a good coach of others until you learn to coach yourself. And and a big part of the brilliance of wisdom was, of Wooden, was his ability to coach himself. And the the process that he used, the quality of his thinking, the example he set every day, the teaching, he, he described himself as just a teacher. And those things enabled him to be a good leader and ultimately to be the kind of mentor uh, that people wanted to work with, but he also was very intentional in mm-hmm. having eight or nine or 10 significant mentors in his own life. Mm-hmm. Well, that kind of self-coaching can drive personal performance, make you a more effective leader and enable you then to create a good team that's performing at a bi- higher level. 
And at the same time, you're creating the culture and confidence you're looking for. And you ultimately have a team that is high character and very considerate of others. You know, it's interesting, Bob, that we would even put that word on this chart because it was so important in Coach Wooden's life. And to me, this, this was literally earth shattering when John Wooden was always asked, I interviewed him in public many, many times when he was always asked, Coach, how do you want to be remembered? You know, what is your legacy? Hmm. He had a very simple phrase. He said, I would like to be remembered as someone who is considerate of others. That would be enough for me. Well, uh, what if you had everybody in your organization really considerate of others? You think you'd have a very different team dynamic every day? You absolutely would. And oh, how about the way you take care of your customers, right? If you were really considerate about serving your customers at the highest level. That's why uh, ultimately these things come together with the pyramid as the day-to-day -day behavior that can drive your ability to coach yourself, perform at a high level, be an effective leader, and ultimately create a team that can do all these things as well. And when you've got these things in place, you're going to have an excellent organization. You're going to have an organization that accomplish, that can accomplish both greatness in the marketplace and goodness in their life and the world in which they live. Amen. So, you know, one of the things that strikes me, a couple of things that strikes me about this, you know, um, uh, as, a, as an employee, you know, I would be very, you know, people want to know about what are the values of a company? What are, what's the company culture like? What's the leadership style here? And when a model, not a model like this, when this model gets adopted, now we've got a common vocabulary for things, a common understanding of what those words actually mean, that we're able to implement and execute them, you know, consistently. And so that, you know, if, if I was interviewing with a company and they said that, you know, integrity was a core value, then I could say, well, then, you know, how, how that, that's kind of easy to say, harder to prove. How, how do you see integrity playing out in this corporate culture, you know, on a day to day basis? And you would hope that someone that had a company that had adopted this model would be anybody in that company could answer that question, right? Or how team spirit or skill or take any of the blocks. That, that's one. The other thing you and I talked about kind of preparing for this, and I think it might be interesting for you to, to maybe riff on this for a second, is when you're uh, asked to write a referral or do a performance review, you know where I'm going with that. Do you, do you mind picking that up? No, no absolutely. Yeah, it, it's a perfect blueprint. Uh, let, let's say you had to write a recommendation for a, a young person who was uh, applying to West Point and you had to come up with a great application, how would you describe them? Uh, well, if you use the pyramid as your outline to do that, you could describe how hard the young person works, uh, the quality of relationships they had, the loyalty that they displayed, uh, the way that they, you could go right up the pyramid to the <laughs> point where how they enjoyed a difficult challenge and they were always their best. I mean, you would describe somebody that the doors would fly open yep. and this person would be accepted. Uh, as you see that, Bob, it's also if you think about, well, what if everybody we recruited in our company had these behaviors? What if we use this as a tool to analyze the people that are coming through the door and we're looking mm -hmm. for evidence of these behaviors? Uh, what if we use this as a tool to evaluate the performance of our people? And oh, by the way, there are now companies that are beginning to use the pyramid for just those uh, intentions. Uh, my business partner uh, has a, a, a company with a large company, and that's exactly what he does. He recruits uh, all of his uh, people, and he's in the high-tech business. All of his people using the pyramid and their evaluation system is built on all the blocks of the pyramid and the key ones they've identified as central for their company. That's, yeah. that's kind of also one of the other key things is this can be applied in total, or I could give you a couple of very good examples. We actually have one. Uh, Bob, if you want to bring up, uh, if you want to show the the Los Angeles Rams, why don't we just show that? Okay, this one hurts a little bit, Lynn, if I'm being honest. I know. Go ahead. 
Yeah, this happens to be a pyramid uh, that was developed by a guy named Sean McVeigh, who's the coach of the Los Angeles Rams and happened to be uh, a student of Coach Wooden over the years. And, and he adapted uh, the pyramid um, in, in some really interesting ways. A lot of the blocks uh, that are in the base of the pyramid, he describes in these other terms, he uses character and connectivity and things like that. Uh, and the process and the standards, he's got the team idea, we, not me, everything, no selfishness on a Super Bowl champ. That's what he wanted. And ultimately, he put poise and confidence in competitive greatness, exactly <laughs> where Coach Wooden put it, because he knew those were the things that he was looking for in his team. And he was always talking about in post-game interviews, how they really enjoyed the difficult challenge. And they, they found a way to be their best when their best was needed. Uh, we have another client, the Kansas City Royals, that used the pyramid of success to develop something called One Royal Way. And it's their cultural identity. They have a, a series of, of, um, of um, pillars. That's the word I was looking for. A, a, a pillars diagram that represents blocks on the pyramid. And it's their cultural definition that we actually went to the Dominican Republic and worked with players and coaches in the Dominican to help them define one royal way for the Dominican Baseball Academy. So the pyramid can be used absolutely as it is, uh, a total blueprint, or it can be adapted to, to, uh, you know, to the specificity that you might want in your own company. That's how flexible it is. It's the ultimate filter uh, for thinking through and talking through all of these behaviors that ultimately you need to be successful. Well, you know, the other place, and maybe we'll start wrapping this up in just a second, but I, I also think about uh, clients, you know, candidates who are interviewing for jobs, and an interview is a very nerve-wracking thing for a lot of people, and you know, one of the things that we try and coach people around is convictions lead to clarity, clarity leads to confidence, and confidence is contagious, and you, again, it's these character qualities, knowing what you believe, being true to yourself, having the peace of mind of knowing that I'm being, you know, making the best out of what I can become. And then, you know, when it's time to show up and deliver game time, showing up with poise and confidence. And those are winsome qualities when you're interviewing somebody. But, but the confidence is, to Lisa's earlier point, they're grounded in reality. So when somebody asks, well, you know, tell me about a time when you, you know, you seem to be very confident, Bob. Why is that? You know, glad you asked, Lynn. And you've got very specific things that you can point to because there's a process that leads to that poise, that confidence. And, you know, I just find that, you know, a frame, this framework, you know, just has so much applicability because yeah, it changes us as a human. Go ahead. Yeah, go back to slide one where we have the two pyramids uh, side by side. Yeah. Um, again, you know, as you're describing that, Coach Wooden had this great phrase, failure to prepare is preparing to fail. Right? And you, when you know you've prepared and you know you're prepared when you're exhibiting all of these That's right. qualities and you're working at all these qualities on a day-to-day -day basis, that's where true confidence comes from. You know you can be confident because you know you're prepared and you've made the effort to do your best to get that preparation level to its highest level. Of, okay. So, uh, so, so let, let, let's close with this because I think it's very appropriate. Um, you know, we've been holding Coach Wooden up you know, as you know, this real kind of model of, of these things. And yet Coach Wooden would not say that he had achieved everything. And there is a, a very big dose of humility because sometimes I, I don't want to confuse confidence and, and arrogance. Coach Wood was actually very humble in all this and didn't feel like he'd ever really kind of quite gotten all the way there. Do, do, you, do you mind kind of sharing uh, his deathbed story? Yeah. Um, you know, when I said when I say that John Wooden lived his entire life on the pyramid of success, it literally went down to the, his final few moments on earth. Um, when when coach was in his final hours at the UCLA Medical Center and he was um, basically had his family uh, around his bedside 
uh, and his pastor, uh, Dudley Rutherford, who was there. Uh, Dudley's a pretty challenging guy. You'd think he'd be the kind of man who a, a guy like John Wooden would need as a pastor because uh, literally in his final hours, uh, Pastor Rutherford asked Coach Wooden if he'd like to, uh, you know, would like to hear any scripture from the Bible. John Wooden read his Bible every single day. Uh, and Coach said he did. And he asked him what scripture and he wanted to hear the great commandment. Uh, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. That was the final scripture John Wooden wanted to hear. Well, here Dudley then asks this man who's going to pass away within a couple hours, but who is still very lucid. Well, coach, how did that go for you? Pretty tough question. How did that go for you? He said, I'm still working on it. Mm -hmm. And then Dudley asked him the final question that anybody would ask him, literally on the space of this earth. And he said, Coach, which one are you working on right now? Mm. And John Wooden's final words were loving God. What John Wooden was doing was spending his final moments on in the faith block mm. at the top of the pyramid of success. Yeah. He lived it every single day of his life and exhibited it in his final moments, not only teaching us how to live, but teaching us how to die. I mean, what, what could be more powerful, Bob? So I don't know how to end on a better note than that. Lynn, this has been phenomenal, so thank you. If someone wanted to learn more about Coach Wooden and the Pyramid of Success and whether how they might want to apply it personally or at their company, what's the best way to reach you? Well, uh, you can reach me at my uh, email, lg at tjrwc.com, lg at tjrwc.com. That stands for the John R. Wooden Course. And we have a couple of websites, the John R. Wooden Course.com, the John R. Wooden Course.com, and Wooden Course Products.com. Great. Well, this has been phenomenal. It's been educational, inspirational, uh, just as I knew that it would be. And I just thank you so much for, you know, having picked up the, the mantle and the torch from Coach Wooden and, and making this available to another generation uh, that it can continue to, you know, change lives and, and give people ultimately, just going back to the definition of success, that peace of mind that comes from self-satisfaction of knowing they made the effort to become the best they were capable of becoming. So thank you for everything you're doing in that. And I really appreciate you spending time with us today. Thank you, Bob. Been a wonderful experience. I don't think there's ever been a time when we need it more than we need it now in the world that we're living in. So appreciate the opportunity. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And I hope everyone has a wonderful, wonderful day.